it's all. Good morning, YouTube. It's Rob Monty. All right, so today on Wrestling News, we have a lot of stuff to cover. First and foremost, congratulations again to Asuka on becoming a Grand Slam champion. She's won every belt the WWE has to offer to women right now. I know some people are going to say, well, why not the world title? Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe that's a possibility. Who knows? Um, but congratulations yet again for becoming one of WWE's newest Grand Slam winners. Um, on top of that, also another congratulations again to Becky Lynch on her on her um, pregnancy. And I pray that it's going to be a successful pregnancy and that you get to enjoy those joys of being a mother. And just, you know, that's some, it's happy news, guys, for that. All right, so today's um, news. We're going to be talking about stuff from Impact today. Um, also, we're going to be talking about who's going to be the third participant in the AEW ladder, I mean, cas casino ladder match. And we're also going to talk about how you guys can get to watch um, Double or Nothing this year. And we're going to even go into more news considering... Um, MLW because they have gotten big news deals today and on top of that we're going to see a lot of different comments from different wrestlers today so let's take a look alright let's get into it Um, first and foremost I think since we started off with thanking Becky Lynch and or, I mean congratulating Becky Lynch and Asuka I think it's good to go into some Becky Lynch news um, appropriately and then some Oscar news real quick all right so first and foremost um, Becky Lynch was in an interview earlier today okay what the hell all right sorry guys all this encryption stuff this is because I saved some stuff and they give me stop they stop it you know this thing all right, so in an interview, Becky Lynch has announced, uh, talks about her pregnancy. And this is what she had to say in this interview. Basically, sorry guys, I had to answer that. Her pregnancy, she comments, she's always wanted to have kids. And she's so, com we are focused that it became one of those things like, are you just tracing a dream for so long and she wondered and if she's ever going to get around to it is it going to happen for her basically and then having a baby spending the rest of her life with Seth Rollins she goes on and says when we got together things started to look a lot clearer and I knew he was the person I, I wanted to have kids with that this was going to happen and it was just a matter of when Seth is one of the smartest people I know. The star, who is originally from Ireland, says her fiance. He just got an insurance, I mean, an insane work ethic, insane integrity, and he's the most generous and kind hearted person. He's very, very focused on what the right thing to do is, always, and always looking to grow and correct himself. And he be and be better so he can be the best person for me and now the best father you know what that's a clap for Seth Rollins right there guys I think the Monday Night Messiah deserves that you know um, and she's gonna like when did Becky find out she was expecting she says I took one the first pregnancy test wrong then I took a few more tests until I got a digital one that said the word pregnant I was with Seth at the time, and he just threw his hands up in the air, all excited. Of course, you started becoming ner to become nervous, too, because you lived your whole life thinking for yourself and yourself alone. Now you have this whole other person that you have to look after and grow and make sure that you're doing everything that you possibly can to make sure that they are the healthiest and the safest they can be. But we're just so excited, just so excited for how much we, how much love we're going to give the little thing. And if she's asked, well, this is the money dollar question. So. Um, 
was this is the million dollar question here, guys, and that is, will she be returning to the ring in 2021? And she says, it's such a joyous time and then such a sad time, too. I loved this and I given my life to this. I achieved everything that I want to achieve in this business. I do, don't know what the next chapter is because I only know what it's like to think for myself when I'm by myself. So I don't know what all it'll look like and how my priorities shift and what I'm going to do going to want in the future so everything is open of course as you guys know she um has also went on twitter and says i have no idea what happens from here but i do know that you're made all your dreams you made all your dreams come true i entered the pc in 2013 not knowing anyone i'll leave the same building tonight with my new family thank you all so much and of course with her jacket right here that says the man the champ the first the g g the goat honestly guys um before we go on i hate that abbreviation of the goat i know what it means but to me it's like yeah i i don't know why anybody would want to call themselves a goat even if you are saying you're the greatest of all time i mean seriously i don't know why you anyone would want to call themselves a goat <laughs> to be honest but anyway <laughs> Becky's not sure of what's going to be her next chapter in the wrestling business. And, you know, she is, um, she, um, you know, I think right now, as far as the next chapter of her life goes, she should focus on being a mother. I mean, she's got to at least raise her child enough into until the child can be taken care of by loved ones with her or you know in other words i think she should be focusing on being a mother first before she decides to get back in the ring and take the time to really really consider when that will be or when that will ever be i mean to be honest i think right now next chapter of her life she should focus on being the, the mom now nah, now so that's just my honest opinion um, but yeah, this is great news for her and Seth, and I'm so happy for both of them. Um, Becky. Also, guys, it, I just looked this up on Ringside News last night, and it was also reported on PW Streams on Twitter that Becky has also revealed that she had been working WrestleMania pregnant. I'm like, wait, what? So this is what they, what was reported. When she wrestled Shayna Baszler at the Performance Center for WrestleMania, she became the first WWE performer that I know of to work a WrestleMania while pregnant. It makes her a hell of a warrior, but it also might explain why the match was not, phys not the physical war that we all expected and a physical, brutal monster of a match. Obviously, the finish was a little safe and a little weird, and that match didn't live up to what a lot of people would think it should have been. But in hindsight, that makes a lot more sense now, and kudos to everyone involved. It does. If she was pregnant during that match, I'm not mad with it, you know? And quite honestly, Becky is one of the most credible women's champions that we've had, and Shayna Blazler is probably one of the best wrestlers the uh, best MMA to transition into wrestling. So, for them to um, go at it and pull off a good match to keep Becky safe, I mean, yeah, she definitely, they both definitely deserve kudos for that. You know, it was okay for a good match. I'm not, I didn't, I don't think I graded it bad. That's for sure. But a lot of people say, yeah. What's this? You know, this. Ah, so, sorry guys, I'm helping out a friend. They're having a breakdown right now, so I'm just trying to help them out while we're doing this. That's why I'm texting with them. Alright, so, next. Oh, shit, I got a phone call. Yellow? Hey. How's it going, Sherry? 
Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. Um, right now we're, we're doing a combination of both the tube and, um, and, uh, and by mouth. We're, we're waiting for, um, that's, that's the one with the warfarin. I'm either doing it, I do it in the morning for the tube and then at night he's been trying to do it by mouth. Uh, he, uh, for the warfarin? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he he hasn't started by doing it by mouth yet. But we Yeah, yeah, he's been he tried it already once though. So, we're probably going to he wanted to wait until we got the next prescription from Jose. So, so we're probably going to 3.3, okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Tuesday, Thursdays. Why not? Okay. In two weeks. All right. Sounds sounds good. All right. All right. Thanks, Sherry. I'll let him know. Bye bye. My God. Alright guys, alright, so basically with um, Becky Lynch and Shayna Baszler, I mean, good kudos, and um, I say, even though I'm, Shayna's talking all kinds of shit right now, because she wants to talk about how Becky's not a real women's champion at this point, because she's trying to hype herself up, I'm gonna say this, good job, you protected her very good, and um, I say that match was a very, very decent match at best. So I'm glad. I'm glad that they, those two had a good match. You know, that's good, good, new, good thing and good news because you know, if just imagine if Becky had lost the baby during that match, that would have been scary as fuck. So I'm glad that Shayna and Becky took good care of her in that match. That was, I'm actually kind of glad now for that match be, not being as big as violent as everybody thought it would be. That was great, you know. It's good news. Good news. All right. Okay. Let's see where we're going next. Oh yeah, we're gonna go talk about some. We're gonna be talking about. Oh yeah. That's right. Some more Oscar news first. Um, basically just to get Oscar and Becky out of the way, right? So, Oscar is, as you guys know is now being considered the Grand Slam champion and is being congratulated for becoming the Raw Women's Champion. But on Fox Sports today, congratulated her. And you know what? Look at that, guys. All the titles are marked off. She has won every title. She's a, In my opinion, she's a legend now. 
<laughs> um, and I also want to go off and say this. For the people who say that Asuka did not deserve to become Raw Women's Champion because it was handed to her. Uh, you want my honest opinion? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Basically this, guys. Asuka won the money in the bank la at the pay-per-view. She defeated the entire roster. You know, she defeated the entire roster in that pr predicament. Not the entire women's roster, but you get what I mean. She defeated Dana Brooke, Carmella, Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, and, um, what was the, the fifth girl? Lacey Evans. Think about that. Lacey Evans, Shayna Baszler, and Nia Jax are definitely the top women in the, in the um, WWE right now that are not women's champion. That was in this match. And then she beat Dana Brooke, who is basically trying so hard, but she's not going to become women's champion. And Carmella. And she did this all in a Money in the Bank ladder match, which she outsmarted each and every one of them. So, do you do I believe she deserves to be Raw Women's Champion? Well, fuck yes. And you know what? Becky even made it clear last night that she had went up to management and gave them the title so that she could make her announcement last night and that the person who won the Money in the Bank ladder match would really be truly Money in the Bank. And for Asuka, she won Money in the Bank. Becky revealed the briefcase to her the next night. And guess what? She re didn't realize she is the now new women's champion. And if you guys ask me, this has been done in wrestling for years. I mean, if you look at WCW, they did this with the WCW world title. And I believe Booker won the title at that time. Uh, when you look at the Feast and Fired match, that was the whole idea of the briefcase. The briefcase was you didn't necessarily know what you were going to get. And here's the thing, when Becky was making her speech last night and she revealed the title, she basically declared, hey, um, guys, I'm not going to be the w women's champion anymore because I have to take time off. And it's something I want to do because I want to become a mother. So, yeah, the w person who won the money in the bank is truly money in the bank and they deserve this belt. And they would be a good and honorable replacement for me. Think about that, guys. Asuka beat five other women to win that Money in the Bank ladder match. If she's not deserving to be a women's champion, then I do not know what a woman's champion should be. <laughs> I mean, if Becky's not going to be there, the Money in the Bank is a good, good sense of a place to say, yeah, let's make this happen. Um, you know, should they have announced it a week prior? Maybe, because then maybe the women wouldn't have acted like the way they did in the Money in the Bank. But, and Asuka taking advantage of them in that match. Quite honestly, though, I'm not mad about it. I think Becky wanted to do this. It's a special moment, and you know what? As far as people handing titles over to another superstar... This is the most honorable way you do it. But one, Asuka definitely earned that title by winning the money in the bank. Now we don't have to worry about her cashing in or not. And two, she basically had the most respect for Becky. And Becky had respect enough for Asuka to do this for her. And on top of that, folks, this is such a happy moment that both women actually won. Asuka's now the champion. Becky's now going to have a brand new gift of life in her in her household, which is awesome in my opinion. This is the only way you do it honorably when you're handing over someone a title. That's what I'm saying. Speaking of Asuka, guys, she will be on the bump this week on Wednesday's show along with Kevin Nash. So... If you're a fan of Big Sexy Kevin Nash, he will be on the bump. Also, for um, for all of you guys tomorrow who are going to be watching WWE Backstage, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat will also be on appearing. And then after Backstage, or well, before Backstage, don't forget to check out WrestleMania 3 and watch Hulk Hogan slam the giant. Alright.
Now we're going to go on to MLW news here. Major League Wrestling's owner, Court Bearer, Court Bearer has tweeted the following today. Just closed a new deal. More fans in the, here in the U.S. will now be able to check out MLW starting very soon. And then right here, MLW has sent out another message. Thanks at Twitter for your quick assistance with securing our account. We can confirm Contra no longer occupies the account. So MLW is in control of their um, Twitter account. And on top of that, more fans will be able to check out MLW. So for those of you guys who are MLW fans like I am, Go check them out, guys. They're going to be on in the U.S. soon. More often on in the U.S. And also, if you're on this particular page myself, check out this video of um, Toro Yano. It was actually fun to watch last night. All right. Next, we also have Impact Wrestling News and Notes from this week's NWA Power. So, NWA Power will be returning on a special Power Edition and basically the show will be headlined with Strictly Business, Nick Aldis, and Latimer or Latmer versus the Villain Express Enterprises as Marty Scroll and King will be challenging them. So, if you guys are a fan of NWA Power, check it out. Marty Scroll, the villain, will be featured and he will be in a tag team match with Nick Aldis, which is awesome. Speaking of Impact 2, guys, since this is Impact News here, we have um, tonight's broadcast will be featuring the eight-man tournament to determine the number one contender for the world championship, which, by the way, for those of you who don't know, this is for the Impact Wrestling Championship because I know the self-proclaimed DNA World Heavyweight Champion Moose has proclaimed himself to be the true world champion and has pulled himself out of this eight-man tournament. Oh, all right. So, basically, considering that he's the TNA champion, so a lot of you are confused as far as that goes. Um, the eight-man tournament right now will be kicking off tonight with Hernandez versus Madman Fulton. You got Rohit versus Trey. And then also tonight, we're also going to see Havoc face Kimberly on Locker Room Talk. Impact T Tag Team Champions, the North, will once again defend their tag belts. Kylie Ray will go one-on-one -on -one with Tasha Steeles. Ken Shamrock will be another special guest on Locker Room Talk with Madison Rain and Johnny Swinger. Also, as probably one of the main events of tonight... TNA World's Heavyweight Champion Moose will defend his title against Suicide Come Alive. So basically, um, that's going to be tonight's main event and our tonight's card. So quite honestly, I think it's going to be awesome because Moose is coming with the TNA title. And if you guys saw earlier, um, yesterday... Moose had hijacked Impact's um, Twitter, I mean, a YouTube account, and basically, <laughs> oh man, yeah, I think, did I, did I bring it up? Yes, it, it's right here. Moose has hijacked the opening video package for tonight's Impact Wrestling. So when you guys watch Impact tonight, this video here, down here, will be playing. Oh man. Could I play it? No. Oh, wait, I can't because it's Impact. Ah, maybe if I do just little snippets so you guys can see. All right. So. Begins on Impact Wrestling, a tournament to determine the number one contender for the Impact World Championship. You are looking at greatness. A man unlike any other. The only real undisputed champion on the planet and so a lot of people I'm gonna that's just a preview for tonight it's snippets um for the fans out there who are wondering what's the full video gonna be like if you haven't seen the video already um moose hijacks this 
the opening of Impact for tonight's Impact. And basically, it pretty much puts himself over as the TNA World Champion. And you'll see a lot of snippets and interviews from Bully Ray, uh, Christopher Daniels. I mean, it's, it's, it's freaking amazing. Um, and he, they bring up past TNA champions that Moose joins in that illustrious cl- in dust in that freaking big class of TNA main event world champions. Uh, so for all of you guys, I say, I hope you guys enjoy this trailer when you guys watch it tonight. Um, I'm not gonna play the whole video because I don't want to get um, I don't want to get copyright infringement, but. I'm saying this Moose, my God, is awesome. Because not only did he get to replace Impact's current video, he even replaced the video narrator with Barry Scott, who basically did all the voiceovers of TNA's shows back in 2005 to 2000 and I believe 2010. <laughs> so... This was just awesome. I love what Moose is doing right now, guys. And it's fucking awesome. Alright. He's br- resurrecting TNA slowly as we go here. Um, also from Impact. Impact has announced the re-signing of so many um, characters uh, or talent this week. Um, first and foremost, they announced the signing of Crazy Steve. So Crazy Steve is now back with Impact Wrestling full-time. Also, they announced the re-signing of Sue Young and her alter ego, Susie. And quite honestly, I think this was... Those are two big acquisitions. I know I should be saying three because that's kayfabe, but Sue Young and Susie are the same person. It's just Susie is her actual alter ego, yeah. Anyway... The re-signing of Sue Young and the signing of Crazy Steve. To me, guys, that's two big signings for Impact. And I honestly love the idea of all, both of them being part of Impact. For one, Sue Young has been very, very instrumental of being contemporary on a lot of what Impact has been going through. Going back to the days when Ali was not even called the bunny and Rosemary was just getting on her height. So... You know, that, that's a big signing for Impact Wrestling, guys. Um, and as far as Crazy Steve, if it wasn't for Crazy Steve, we wouldn't know about Rosemary. We wouldn't know. And we wouldn't have gotten to see Decay. And we probably wouldn't get to see Decay or D- Delete or Decay, you know. So, that's just one one thing, I guys, I gotta say is awesome to have both of these guys part of Impact. I know a lot of people who are AEW fans are fucking crying right now because it's like, why couldn't you both come to AEW? You would have been great on Dynamite. Impact doesn't hear anybody. So if I'm creating um, friction between the Impact Wrestling fans and the AEW fans, well, congratulations. You both are now considered competition. <laughs> Just... Just like AEW and WWE are competition. <laughs> and I know some people are going to go off and say, well, Impact is nothing compared to AEW. Well, in my opinion, they're better than AEW right now because they're coming out with better storylines. If that makes any damn sense. It's very contemporary. And in my opinion, they could possibly challenge WWE with what they have in storylines going on. And now, that's that's what I'm saying. So if you're an AEW fan, I'm sorry if you don't think these guys are competition because they truly are. Also, um, Double or Nothing guys will be broadcasting. So they're going to go on with Double or Nothing for AEW. And if you check out the road to Double or Nothing, um, AEW has posted their new video on the road to Double or Nothing. Um, basically, if you want to find out what's going on for Double or Nothing right now, especially with the um, pending COVID-19 pandemic, I suggest you come and watch this video. I do not want to play it because that could be a copyright, and I don't want to deal with that. So, 
you guys check that video out. Also, speaking of other videos, Ring of Honor has posted up a selfie showdown with Joe Hendry versus Amy Rose. Uh, and on top of that, Joe Hendry has also sang, is also doing memes and videos about if he sang with Oasis about McDonald's UK reopening during quarantine. Um, if you want a good laugh, Joe Hendry, guys, he's being a freaking riot right now. All right. Now, as we all know about the Boneyard match at WrestleMania, was a classic. It was a legendary battle between AJ Styles and The Undertaker. AJ Styles has discussed well, his match with The Undertaker and basically has now gone on record, guys, and has said he's open to another match with The Undertaker. Now, I'm going to say this. If this is going to become Undertaker's last match, I'm down for it, you know? But if it's not... If it's not, and then, by God, guys, um, I hope they make the match make sense. And uh, that's something that Taker is talking about in his current documentary running on WWE right now, is that every match that he wants to be a part of makes sense for him to be in and to help the other guy get over. So, basically, this is what AJ had to say. I think it definitely was a different side of AJ Styles, and not only AJ Styles, but The Undertaker. Obviously, it was not only is the Money in the Bank match unique. This one, the Boneyard match was unique. It was different. I got to be honest with you guys. I can't take credit for, you know, the pandemic situation that we're in. We're, we were put in a position to have an unbelievable encounter, The Undertaker and I, and I and so the situations are what they are and again you take advantage of them well I can't tell you this I can tell you this there wasn't a referee so I who knew I mean did I lose oh I don't know maybe I didn't got some dirt poured on me but that doesn't mean I lost unfinished business if there's ever a chance for me to get my hands on the Undertaker again I would gladly take him out no problem well I won't say no problem. Obviously, it's a problem, but I'm looking forward to it. So, there you guys go. AJ is open for another match with The Undertaker. Now, I wanted to get into middle of the news because this is going to be one of my major articles today uh, because this came out as of breaking news today. So, first and foremost, let's bring up this article right here about speculating on Sting's WWE status and AEW rumors. Um, basically, Major Wrestling Figure Podcast has announced this. It's not Sting. Due to circumstances out of control, Sting needed to be removed from the Legend Series 7 wrestling action figures. We'll look to include this figure in a future wave if he becomes available to us again. And meanwhile, while this is happening, there is... Um, there is um, stuff where Sting has also said on his official Twitter, just glad to see you getting a match-deserved shot in AEW with, when he's tweeting to Lance Archer. And Cody has responded with eyes open. And then this video on Cody's um, Twitter has also been, um, been posted up. And the main reason for this is you see Cody over here, right? listening in right I guess that that's nothing new but anyway there is a lot of speculation that Sting is going to AEW um, and this comes after a tweet that was made it to Lance Archer and on and the tweet that came out from Mattel saying they will not be including the next action figure in the line but you know what I think they should release it anyway because Sting is part of WWE history now. He's part of WCW history, Impact history. If he goes to AEW, to me, it doesn't shock me. But, but I believe it will be a good, good news. Speaking of which, for those of you guys who are wondering why I brought that article up, today it is reported on the pro wrestling sheet that Sting is no longer under contract with the WWE. With that being said, it's possible the two sides could still work out a merchandising deal in the future. 
And Sting was recently pulled from the action figure line, as we have saw. Um, he's been tweeting AEW recently with Lance Archer, praising him. Cody Rhodes is also teasing Sting is coming to AEW. So this is ending the relationship, I guess, with the current business relationship that Sting has with WWE, which started back in 2014 where he worked a match at WrestleMania 31 and being inducted in the Hall of Fame of 2016. Um, if this is true and he does go to AEW, folks, I mean, that's cool. I mean, I think, to me, I know a lot of uh, everybody's going to say Sting has so much, so much um, popularity yeah. that if WWE would lose, would lose um, a, lot, a lot of traction... You know, more than three weeks, ma. Come back, come back the door. So, yeah, guys, my cat is being a brat. Um, so, Sting is um, leaving WWE. I don't think it hurts WWE at all. I don't think um, it hurts Sting at all, to be honest. Um, quite honestly, he's a legend. He's not fully wrestling as much as everybody would like him to be right now, so... It's not a huge loss, but, you know, I think at this moment for Sting, if he goes to AEW, it's probably going to be a legacy thing. I don't know what Cody's trying to talk to him into, but we'll see, you know. Um, after that match with Seth Rollins, I don't think he should be wrestling, to be honest. But appearance in AEW would be great. Um, now, one of the other things that we wanted to talk about was Otis after winning his Money in the Brink, Money in the Bank briefcase, and this is what he had to say: winning the contract. He goes like, "I found out," and was like, "What?" And when the briefcase got into his hands, that's when it felt real. And he remember watching the first Money in the Bank at WrestleMania, and it blows his mind that he woke up to that briefcase the next morning and those guys are all pro and it's so uh, it was so much fun working with them I love Daniel Bryan kicking me right in the chest once we all got together the ideas were flowing so to be honest guys that was <laughs> I, I still love that money in the bank match I'm sorry guys it was fun um, comedy wrestler he says I've Heard so I'm I've heard I'm just a big man comedian wrestler. I'll admit I always the loud one in the room, but when it's time for business, it's time for business. Can I be main event? Let's do it. If I sink, then that's on me. I love wrestling, and I'm going to show people that I can do it. So, hey, Otis wants to prove that he's a main event player. Let's let it. Let's see where it goes. You know. Also in the news, Glacier has comments about breaking into the business and bonding with Eric Bischoff. And basically in this interview, he states that it literally took him three to five years to get his feet wet with wrestling. And that he learned in a year it's just not about four or five. It felt like it was good enough to be, he thought he was good enough to be top level. And he was trying to be humble, but, it, you know, it kept, he kept, it, the business is unfair in the world. And people get breaks that you may not, you may see, and you're like, how, man, how did that person break, get a break, and I'm not getting a break. So he, he expresses his frustrations with the business. And being signed to WCW, it took him almost nine years to break and it actually happened and a hundred percent he knew that he was gonna sit there and convince convince the guy that he's somebody that he needed to be signed and he's and he goes on he'll never forget that he was drinking ice water and he was not and he was not gonna go up to the bathroom he, he while he was trying to convince Bischoff to sign him so and then he talks about Bischoff right here. And he goes on and states, The first hour and a half of our meeting 
was just ta us talking martial arts. That's where I felt like I really won him over. He throw names at me of tournament karate people and stuff like that. I didn't know that he and Ernest Miller were great friends at the time. I would learn soon after that. But I feel like I felt like Eric went in that meeting looking to find out if I say that I know this stuff or if I really know this stuff. And then Bischoff says, I think the lessons he learned a lot from the, of them didn't become evident to him later. Until later, he was until he was looking, able to look back and say, "I wish I could have really done that differently." So, there you go. Um, as far as the glacier gimmick, I should it have been done differently, guys? In um WCW, I don't know. I I really don't know. I think Glacier should have came back and had something to go with, even if it was like a small TV title run during um. During the lower card segments, but you know, the business and the life of watching professional wrestling is not always fair. Some guys get pushed, some guys don't get pushed. And the fact that Glacier is making a comeback now, just doing his gimmick everywhere else, is kind of fun to watch. Even though back then it would have been cooler because it was a Mortal Kombat gimmick that Bischoff was looking for. All right. Next, um, third participant for the double or nothing ladder match has been set. And it will be Orange Cassidy in this casino ladder match. Basically, it's almost like Money in the Bank's ladder match, but it's guaranteed. If you, or it's guaranteed that the winner will receive a title shot. And it's guaranteed it will be going up for the AEW World Championship. So, Orange Cassidy is the third entrant. Um, in my picking him to win, how many people are in this ladder match? I forgot how many were. But, it's so far you have Darby Allen, Cope Cabana, and Orange Cassidy. And then there's one more spot in. So, unlike the Money in the Bank, which has six to eight people, the casino ladder match has four people. So, to find out who's going to be the fourth and final entrant, I say this is a big opportunity. Don't lo don't lose track of it. If Coca Banner wins, I'll be pissed to be honest. Because Coca Banner don't deserve a world title shot. He just joined their freaking company. That's just my honest opinion. Um, and quite honestly, the way Coca Banner treats other people, I heard, is kind of very scummy in life too. From what I heard. Um, as far as that on Double or Nothing's card, you have the World Heavyweight title. It will be Mox versus Brody Lee for the title. Well, that should be an interesting match in my opinion. Um, this is a new version of Luke Harper versus a new version of Dean Ambrose, really. But I think this is going to be a different kind of match than what they had in the past. Um, we also will have the AEW TNT Championship Finals as Cody Rhodes and Lance Archer are going to meet. And there will also be Jungle Boy versus MJF. So, if you guys are going to check out Double or Nothing, that's the current card as it stands. Um, next, we are talking about this new rule that's been brought up to light by WWE. And that's a brand-to-brand -brand invitation invite. So, for those of you guys know, this is like a crossover stipulation, much like the wild card. But it's said to be more simpler. Um, basically, the rule is originally allowed to up to, what does it say, up to four wrestlers from each brand to appear on their opposite brands. With that being said, there were, there were many more than four. That's from the wild card, my bad. But basically, what's going on is the only way you get to go on the other show is through invite. So, as seen on Raw, the Iconics made their return due, due to the fact that they interrupted Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. So, that's another thing there. So, it's by invite only from what it sounds like. Um, Drew McIntyre is also um, inv invited King Corbin for next week's Raw, in which the 
WWE Championship will be on the line, from what I've been been told. So Drew and Corbin next week. I bet you Corbin gets owned again. But this will be the first real crossover. So that's what I'm gonna tell you guys right now, as far as what about the uh, brand to brand invitation initiative. Um, numerous superstars are reacting to Becky Lynch is pregnancy announcement. Like as you guys know, Mickey James, Kyrie Zane, Peyton Royce, Mia Yim, they all are congratulating Becky right now. I think even some people from AEW too, I believe, have even congratulated her. So if you guys want to check that out, I mean, you can go on our Twitters and check it out. I'm, it's I'm, it's. That's something I'm not going to cover too much on because everybody knows what's going on. All right. Now we have Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows address their releases in July. Um, Carl Anderson went on Twitter and said they had made a decision to make in September in 2019. And they made the wrong one in 68 days at midnight. Him and Luke Gallows were, were released. And they will talk about it in 68 days. Uh, Lou Gallows also retweeted it. So, if you guys want to know, they will be doing a podcast on Talk Shop, Talking Shop Mania, or Talking Shop. They're going to be talk. They're going to discuss their release and what led to their release of WWE. Um. Basically, on top of that, Leo Rush reveals how he found out about his release, and he was part of the first group of releases, and they actually made the call. He actually had to make the call himself when he saw that there was a lot of news sites posting about him. So they didn't call him to let him know that he was being released. And he asked them straight up, am I one of those people being who's going to be released today? And it, because he's seeing it all over the internet, and they and he said, unfortunately, they told him he is unfortunately. Um, was he being angry that he didn't find out beforehand? Yes, because how is it that nobody tried to reach out to him before the news got out that he was being released, basically? And then, as I as stated on yesterday, he talked about. How he might not legitimately wrestle again, which is basically what he basically said yesterday was that he doesn't feel happy or feel mentally right to be wrestling right now at the time. So he wants to pull back just so that he can just, you know, get healthy and get right before he even decides to get back in the ring. And it's not just what WWE is also talking about if he was considering AEW. And then, and if he's asking if wrestling, has, they were asking if wrestling has a, had a positive or negative impact on his mental health. In which he de, de, definitively said, I think both. Definitely both. Um, and he goes on and talks about how hard he worked his ass off and to live out his dreams, which was positive, and got him to do everything and being coming a WWE superstar. But then he had to realize he hadn't seen everything like politics, going through the system, dealing with a lot of bullshit, being negative. But yes, there was a lot of stuff, both positive and negative, that has an impact on his mental health. And that's Leo Rush's side of his release. Um, now, going to breaking news. Okay, now maybe we can go on back to the initiative, the crossover rule. Because I don't think I got it right. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, I got it right. It said it's a simpler version of the convoluted wild card rule. So this is by invite. And I think it's only going to be a, like one or two superstars. Depending on what the situation is, I guess. We'll see what happens. But from what Post Wrestling is um, reporting, that this rule will be simpler than the convoluted wild card. The idea is to allow talent to appear on separate brands during the current pandemic. Obviously, the recent low 
ratings are a huge factor in making this decision. It came at the network's request. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say. That is exactly what Stig here says. They need to start doing bigger, sh doing shows at bigger venues if possible. Even when empty, when it's empty, it helps with the feeling of the show like AEW have done. They did a few shows from a small gym, someone who works for AEW owns, and they sucked. But last week at the stadium was great. As long as it ends when the pandemic is over. And then somebody goes up and says, could be a long wait. Some say it won't really be over a year, in worst case, two years. And then this guy, Lil Bishard, says, here we go with this shit again. Beyond horrible. And then there's another person. Bring back the bra and panty matches. I'm like, wow, that was out of work. Of course, a good friend of mine, Whit Rizzy, is making a freaking joke out of it because he thinks it's a joke. You know what, guys? The reason why a lot of people hate this idea is because they're thinking, they should just make better storylines. They shouldn't be worrying about changing everything up. Well, quite honestly, that's not necessarily always the case. Maybe some guys are not entertaining enough. Some guys are not doing good enough. Who knows? Um, for real... They're just trying to do something new because they have a shorter roster during this pandemic. Most of the guys that are on the current WWE roster are basically either staying at home or are called to work when it's time to work, basically. Or if they can make it or not. They're not being forced to do the show due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's a factor going in. There's a couple guys injured. And then on top of that, I'm big, as you guys know, a Black Wednesday. There is so many guys who got released by WWE during this pandemic. It's kind of hard to do a show when your roster has greatly, greatly decreased for whatever reason, you know. So for them to do this, I think it's a good idea for now. For now, until this pandemic closes and ends... WWE should have this crossover rule. That way, talent gets more time on TV. Along with that, um, Vince McMahon is pushing for shorter pay-per-view events going forward. Um, main reason is due to the pandemic as well. Plus, it's also due to other things, such as the lack of fan in, in attendance for a pay-per-view. So... Basically, Vince is pushing himself to do shorter pay-per-view shows at the moment. So, I'm guessing that that does not include WrestleMania or SummerSlam, but I can understand why Vince wants to have shorter pay-per-view events, especially with the short amount of ro roster that he has at the moment. It just makes sense, in my opinion. It makes sense. Um, a lot of people are probably reacting just as bad as they are to um, to the crossover rule. And so somebody who's pretending to be Hollywood Hogan says, I am guess Vince is doing cinematic matches for pay-per-views. But then there's people who agree with this, like myself. And then there's people who are going like, is it available? are they available on pay-per-view anymore or just the network? Thank the Messiah, I was getting burnt out. So there's a lot of people who are not against shorter pay-per-views. And I think it's because a lot of the pay-per-views that run from somewhere from four, five to four, four to five to maybe even seven or eight hours, it's just too long of a show. Um, I like the idea of what they did for WrestleMania, and I think they should do that for WrestleMania in future years, and that's basically do it on two nights. So that each... Part, each part is like special and everybody's match has a special feeling and everybody remembers the match years to come. So it might be a smart idea to do shorter pay-per-views. Also, uh, I think where we're at in our time. Yeah, we're, we're going to be making an hour here. Uh, I'm gonna get, I already went over on the Shayna Baszler thing. So let's go here with the, the Intercontinental title. 
Um, as you guys know, Sami Zayn has been out due to COVID-19, and he, as he doesn't want to work during the pandemic. Um, Sami Zayn's healthy, folks, but he he doesn't feel comfortable working the pandemic. But I knew this was coming because he took the Intercontinental title with him because he's the Intercontinental champion, and he hasn't appeared since successfully defending it at WrestleMania. So, Sammy isn't willing to work during the ongoing pandemic. So, WWE has made, is looking to make an announcement regarding the championship in the near future. Whether it means Sammy will be stripped of the title or not, a decision is going to be determined. And, guys, I've been saying this for about maybe a month now. That I was worried when Sammy was going to take time off from this because of the pandemic that the Intercontinental Championship was in jeopardy. Um, mainly because, for one, we weren't going to be seeing the belt and it's one of WWE's most important belts in in the company. So, in my honest opinion, I saw this coming. I saw this coming. And so, there's going to be a decision to make. Whether it's going to announce an interim or if it's not, you know. But this is the consequences that's going to be happening with the Intercontinental title missing because Sa the champion himself isn't willing to work. Now, is it a bad idea that he gets punished? Is he getting punished for it? Probably not. It's just the belt needs to be on the show. So Sammy might not be getting um, punished for all the people who think he is. But I'm pretty sure from what it sounds like to a lot of people... It already sounds that way. And look at this. There's a whole lot of people come bitching and complaining here. One saying, is Sammy Zay pregnant too? <laughs> if they stripped Sammy or after doing an interim tournament, title tournament, is bullshit. I legit forgot who was the Intercontinental Champion. <laughs> See, and that proves my point. <laughs> right there. After all these years, Sammy wins the IC title, then COVID-19, then IC champion nowhere to be seen. Too bad for him, a win for nothing. He gave up his first title very easy. WWE title easy. Might as, may as well count it being the, his last. Vince will remember. See, see, all these people are bitching and complaining because Sami Zayn decided to not work. I don't. I believe he ain't gonna be punished, folks. For the people who think he's being punished, y'all need to chill out. <laughs> Seriously, you need to chill out. All right, all right. And for more AEW news, um, Chris Jericho is set to appear on the TV show Ridiculous on MTV. Ridiculousness. So. Check that out. It will be airing tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did the Becky Lynch. I don't know why I can close out on that. Did the... And here's the thing. King Corbin was the one who made the challenge to Drew. And Drew accepts, as we know. Yeah. Also, they were, they were promoting Raw and Edge and... Um, Orton. Yeah, we already went over that. That's the results from last night. Right. Yep. And we're done, guys. We, we went over from everything. Shit, I had to check. Holy crap. It's a lot of stuff, guys, to go over. <laughs> Speaking of Pokemon, shit. Anyway, guys. Um... It's a lot... It's a lot going in, you know, a lot uh, going on. Um, you know, a lot going on in wrestling right now. Intercontinental title, we're having a crossover happening. Becky's pregnant, Sting's parting ways. I mean, a lot. So, guys, what, what are you guys, what is your guys' thoughts? Um, if I'm basically making fun of all of you guys who are complaining, I'm sorry. But it's just entertaining to watch you guys complain about stupid stuff. For one, I know there's people complaining about Sting. I know there's people complaining about Asuka becoming champion. 
I know there's people who are going to complain about this crossover rule. You know, or complain about the club, or complain about Leo Rush. You know, there's just too many people out there who got a lot of opinions. And I think their opinions is kind of sometimes too much, and they just need to chill. And then there's the people like my friend Rizzy on um dis on the discuss chat who tends to be um who de kind of depends to be kind of cynical, you know, just you know cynical about the whole thing. And he just he likes to he likes to basically crack jokes or just be mean about certain topics, you know. Um, for all of you who are going like your friend, where is he? I mean, I think I saw your guys' chat and you kind of abused him in a way. It's like I didn't abuse him. I was just making fun. He, I admit, joke wasn't funny when I did it, but, you know, I kind of find it very funny when someone's being cynical and they're just being cynical just because they're cynical, you know, about something because they don't like it. Um, in my opinion, that's wrestling for you. I mean... Fuck, just because someone doesn't get over, or somebody has to get stripped, or something like that, people get upset, guys. I mean, the wrestling business is not a fair business. It truly, truly isn't a fair business. In fact, it's a tough, tough business. And, you know, people might not agree with me. I, I, I agree. You don't have to agree with me. I agree to disagree with you, so that's my opinion. Um, do I think Sami Zayn's going to be punished? No, no. I think, um, if anything, they just want to make sure to get the IC belt back on TV so it can become relevant. And if it's going to be an interim belt, hey, I'm down. Sami Zayn versus the interim champion. And I know Sami's going to play it up pretty good if he has to put up bow over the person who wins the interim belt, if they do an interim belt. So, I don't think Sami's going to get punished. I swear, the people who think Sami's getting punished... I think you're just reading into it too deep, you know? Just too deep. Alright. Other than that, guys, hit a like, subscribe, comment down below if you can. Share some thoughts. Um, I didn't even do question of the day. There's no question of the day for today, guys. Um, my question of the day to you is, what is your thoughts on today's news and Becky Lynch's pregnancy? Other than that, guys, y'all have a good day. Y'all take care. God bless. Stay safe. And thanks for watching.